Hi, I'm Debbie Nelson with Nixing Publishing here in the United States, and we are going to talk with Adrian Nixon, who is the editor in chief of the Nixing Journal, coming to us from Yorkshire, England. Hi, Adrian. How are you? Hi, Debbie. I'm great. Thanks very much. Today we have another graphene ink application. This mm -hmm. is another sensor, but it's a different kind of sensor. Previously, we talked about um, graphene ink being used to make mechanical sensors. So one of the videos we showed was somebody, uh, well, a, a sensor was printed on the base of a seat and then somebody sat on it, it deformed the sensor, and we got a different electrical conductivity because the sensor was physically deformed or bent or pressed on. The, there's another way of making graphene sensors this time, uh, rather than responding to pressure, you can make them respond to uh, the chemical environment and biochemicals as well, which is quite uh, important. So again, probably the easiest thing is for me to share my screen. So this time uh, we're printing what's called an electrochemical sensor. So the way that these things work is, I'll just go back again for a second. Th this slide builds because there's a little bit of information here. So. First of all, we start off by printing the basic shape of the graphene sensor, and we get this like comb pattern. So we've got one contact here, another contact here, and the two never quite meet, but the, um, you form the current through, um, through the loop. And depending what lands on this comb bit here, uh, changes the way that the sensor works. Uh, you with me so far, Debbie? I think so. Right, now, previously we talked about screen printing. Now, Screen printing is a way of, you can imagine um, you get like a, a non-porous surface and you punch a lot, a lot of little holes in so the liquid can go through only where you want it to. And so you can form a pattern by laying a template on top of the surface. That's one way of creating sensors. And that's how the sensors at the hackathon worked. It's screen printing. But the problem there is you, you can't get the resolution uh, that you need. Now, resolution means the amount of fine detail you can print. Now, okay. inkjet printers can be used with graphene inks, but they don't really give you the fine resolution you need either. So this time, the, these were printed with something called an aerosol jet printer. This is where the graphene ink is uh, vaporized into an aerosol, and then it's squirted through a very fine nozzle that has a sheath gas around it which then can target and narrow down the jet of uh, ink to a very, very fine detail. So you can print something of 40 micron resolution and a micron, one micron is a millionth of a meter. Uh, so you get 40 millionths of a meter of resolution, which is pretty fine. Sure, because if we were gonna do some kind of an analogy, you could say it's kind of like the difference between using a map, uh, like a thick magic marker to using an extremely fine one. You're Absolutely. using a much more detailed, something that could do something with more detail. Yes, spot on. You just said in a couple of seconds what it took me a minute or two to do. Thank you. <laughs> so now if we have a look and see what the, uh, the little bit more detail here is, if we magnify up this section here, we can see this part of the sensor. Now what the, the team who did, did the work behind this sensor did, they, um, they did something called annealing with carbon dioxide. That's what the CO2 is here, um, which puts oxygen containing groups on the surface because then you can do some chemistry and stick other things on. So here, these monoclonal antibodies, these green things, were stuck onto the graphene sensor. And that would then activate the, uh, the sensor and make it specific to a particular type of biochemical um, uh, thing that you're looking for. And depending what type of uh, antibody you can put on to here, you change the selectivity of your sensor. However, there's a problem because um, it might not be that selective. So here we might get other chemicals that we don't want landing on uncoated surfaces of the, the sensor and giving us a false reading. So what the team then did was they added a blocking agent. So now these uh, yellow shapes here show just a, a graphic representation of the, uh, the blocking agent covering up all the bits that we don't want. So the only bits that can react are the ones with the antibody on. So now we improve the selectivity of our sensor to what we're actually looking at, making it very specific. And again, does that sort of make sense, Debbie? Yeah, and, it, and it's interesting because you, you have to keep that continuous pattern of the circuit, but it doesn't block that. It just blocks anything else from landing on it. Exactly, yes. The only bits of the, the circuit that are active are the ones where we've got our um, uh, monoclonal antibody bonded. So that's the only thing that's going to be reactive and change the current. And what happens is when the target molecule lands in this sort of little uh, cup shape here, 
uh, the receptor site, then it changes the way that the graphene sensor conducts electricity. And so now we can make a very cheap and cheerful sensor because we can screen, uh, uh, aerosol jet print these sensor patterns onto things like um, plastics, uh, usually, or uh, possibly paper, but probably more uh, uh, polymer films. And the, we've now got a very cheap sensor that could be mass produced and made very specifically. They're, um, they're fairly uh, sensitive too. We're, we're talking about the range of sort of parts per million. So uh, this particular uh, sensor detected histamine and uh, you can just put a drop of liquid onto it and it would detect it within the range of about six to 200 parts per million, which, um, yeah. which is pretty sensitive. It's not quite as sensitive as the field effect transistors that we talked about. This isn't a, a transistor type of um, sensor. Yeah. They're far more sensitive, but... The big advantage of these is that they're easy to, fairly easy to make, uh, quite selective, fairly reliable, and uh, cheap. Now, when you talk about using it, they're det it's detecting a histamine. So this is a medical application, then? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Usually, um, but you could um, you could have it. You could change the the um, uh, the receptor molecule that you put on there to react with different things. So you could change it to react with industrial chemicals. In this particular case, it was just biochemicals. Wow, that's really different and pretty exciting. I don't, I don't yeah. know how to think this stuff up. Thank you so much for your time, Adrian. We'll see Welcome, you again. David.